How's it going guys? My name is Stone and welcome to these reviews. Today I'm going to be talking about another Fleetwood Mac album that I feel deserves much more love than it gets. Uh, I think it's their band's fifth studio album if you don't count Blues Jam, but that is Future Games. Uh, I'll show you up close without the glare, just because I like to keep the shrink wrap on. But this is a recent pressing I got of it online. It's John McVie, I guess. Or the penguin filling in for him. But, yeah, Future Games. Uh, this is the first album to feature Bob Welch on uh, lead vocals on guitar, and the first album to officially have Christine McVie as a, a member, where she was uh, featured on Kiln House, and obviously, I think, had been with the band at one point or another till Mr. Wonderful. But yeah, um, Future Games really took me by storm when I first heard this record. I, uh, after hearing Then Play On, I was unsure where to go from there in terms of like the Bob Welch era of the group. And uh, I just, once I put this record on from the first track, I was, like I said, blown away and just caught off guard by how beautiful and how different this record was. For me, it's like crazy that it's even the same band, which is what I love about certain artists like King Crimson and uh, Pink Floyd and other groups that uh, over time really change their sound where though they don't sound anything like they used to, there's still something going on in their music that defines who they are. And I feel like that could be said about Mick Fleetwood's drumming and John McVie's bass. They are the rhythm section of Fleetwood Mac that is the most characteristic of the band. So yeah, this record uh, as well has Danny Curran from I guess the Peter Green era, though he was an original member. But in my opinion, uh, he is on top game in terms of songwriting. All the songs he brings to the table are incredible. And though there's only eight songs on this record, uh, it's just such a, an amazing listen from the back. And it is an album that really should be listened to as an album, in my opinion. The first track, uh, like I said, the one that really pulled me in was uh, Woman of a Thousand Years, which has some great chord changes in the acoustic guitar and just some poetic lyrics. And uh, it's just so beautiful the way Danny sings it. He gives it so much emotion, though he's not like belting it out in any kind of way. He's just, I guess he's uh, understanding how, I'm not like understanding, but I guess he's uh, he's going along with the mellowness, if that's a word. Uh, of the song and the, the, his guitar playing really shows that as well because it is just fantastic and hypnotizing in a way which much of the guitar playing on this record is. Uh, the, the track that follows this uh, which is Christine McVie's first song yeah first lead vocal on Fleetwood Mac, uh, Morning Rain which I actually like a lot it has a lot of great energy to it and uh, it really shows the rock side of this record too because though it is a very mellow record for the most part there are still heavier moments here and there. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to say heavy, I just mean more rocking moments. And this is definitely one of them. I will say that Christine McVie uh, definitely isn't uh, the songwriter she would later become in Fleetwood Mac. So I don't think these are by, not, not any of her best stuff by far, but it's still really good and I can still appreciate it, especially Morning Rain. Um, then this is followed by What a Shame, which is most notably... Oh, I am going to say no because it's not known. But an uh, interesting fact about it is that they only recorded this song, which is like a two minute instrumental, just because the their record label refused to have an album with only seven songs on it. So it's funny uh, yeah, thinking about that now because I don't think that's a thing groups have to go through nowadays, but Fluid Mac had to. And I say it's a kick ass instrumental. I love the saxophone playing by uh, Christine McVie's brother. It says on the back. Yeah, John Perfect. Yeah. If you didn't know, her last name was Perfect as well. But yeah, I absolutely love this song. Uh, I like to think of it as a little, like I said, interlude or a little break from all of the mellowness that this record has. And I guess it really, I wouldn't say it prepares you for the title track, but it's certainly a, uh, a curveball, which I kind of like. And I think it's a really good song, and I love the drumming on it. But uh, this follows the... This, sorry, this follows up, sorry, I got my words mixed up, uh, this is followed by the closer in side one, which is probably 
for me, top three Fleetwood Mac songs, or at least definitely my favorite Bob Wolf song, which is Future Games, the title track. And this song, wow, I won't, I would not be surprised if this is my most played song this year. I mean, I'm still playing it all the time because this song is just so perfect from his guitar play. Obviously, Bob Welch is such an, a mesmerizing guitar player, and the, his guitar tones throughout the Bob Welch years of Fluid Mac are just incredible. And it really shows that he's uh, on top of his game right from the start of Fluid Mac. And the song, from the vocal melody, I mean, like, I can't describe to you guys how much I love this song. It's just so amazing. It's You have to check out for yourself. It is a lengthy song. It's eight minutes, but it's just so ethereal and just so um, it's just uh, so beautiful in my opinion. One of the best for the next songs as I've already said. And every second of it is great. So the drumming, the playing, the vocals, and just the whole progression of the song is fantastic. So if you had to check out one song on this record, I think I would say that sometimes. Check out that one. Um, but side two starts with another amazing track that I've grown to love as much. And I would say like a top 10 for the next song, in my opinion, is Sands of Time, which is another Danny Kerwin track. I absolutely love, uh, once again, the guitar playing. I feel like Bob Welch and Danny Kerwin, I can't tell if they're switching parts at all or if one of them is playing lead on the other song. But either way, they're both fantastic players that really understand how mellow, or like I really understand how to create a mellow atmosphere with some rocking like Les Paul guitar, sorry Les Paul guitar work. Um, but yeah, Danny Curran's playing on this is just like I said, like water in the sense that it's just so like I don't I almost say liquidy because that's just a bad way to put it, but it's just so smooth and just so. Uh, rich I guess if that makes sense though it has very little going on which it's like I said it's very hypnotic and most of the song is just playing and yeah, like, the vocal melody is great as well but uh, just the instrumentation going on throughout most of this record is so uh, gripping so yeah I'm gushing a lot here but that just shows how much I'm into this record which is good um, this is followed up by another fantastic Danny track, the final of his stuff on here. I'm so sad, I know. It's Sometimes, which sometimes, no pun intended, sometimes I absolutely love this song, and then sometimes I just play a little too much for me, or for my ears, and I get a little annoyed of it. But for the most part, it's still an incredible song. Sure, maybe it's a little more um, cutesy poppy, I guess, but I absolutely love the progression of it and um, it's just so beautiful in my opinion. Another, uh, I wouldn't say it's as like grand or as magical as something like Sands of Time or Future Games, but certainly it, um, it's just a very uplifting song in my opinion that I love listening to like on a nice sunny day. And yeah, uh, this is followed by another Bob Woods track, which I, if I had to pick a least favorite, this would probably be it only because a part of me finds the song to be a little repetitive and a little too hard rocking compared to everything else. But I still, uh, like I said, it's not like unbearable. I do think it's a decent track and I do love the energy, like the rocking energy around it. Just the fact that it's on this record maybe wasn't the best choice. But uh, it's still, like I said, it's very rocking. I love the drumming. Like uh, I watched them play the song live on a beat club. On a, yeah, they post like old... YouTube footage or old concert footage, I guess they used to record, and yeah, they play a fantastic version of that. But uh, yeah, it's a great song, like I said, it just doesn't really fit. But the final song, I think, is an excellent closer and really brings back that mellowness that uh, Woman of a Thousand Years had, which is Show Me a Smile, which is Christine's second and final input in this record. And uh, this is another song where Sometimes it's an, I'm not always in the mood for it. Very rarely am I not, though. Like, it's still a great closer, and it, the guitar playing on it, I assume is Danny Kerwin. That's just me taking a guess here, but it's fantastic, and it's just really a, a, a very mellow way to close the record out and makes it seem worthwhile to listen to from beginning to end, or at least for me. So, yeah, there's uh, my review of 
probably, in my opinion, one of the best albums I've heard this year. I've wanted to review it for a while, but when I like do my videos, I like doing them in a certain order. But honestly, I just said, fuck it. And I decided to review this already because I don't want to lose all this information or, I guess, feelings I have for this record before it's too late. So yeah, I'd love to hear your top three songs. My top three probably have to be Future Games, Woman of a Thousand Years, and Sands of Time. I know those are probably the more obvious ones, but they're just so good. And it's just, I don't know, for me, it's crazy, like I said, it's crazy that um, this band uh, could make something like Rumors, but even before Rumors, they were able to create some great music, and like Rumors is so good that all of this music is overshadowed just by like that era of the band, or at least that album. And uh, I'm glad to have like checked out more of their discography, or at least not just their Lindsay and Stevie years. So yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video, and like I said, leave some thoughts down in the comments, and I'd love to get some discussion going. Alright, take care.